Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at Lesson 4.1, Writing Equations in Slope-Intercept Form. Most of what you see today will be a review, so it should be pretty easy for us to go through the, these examples. We're going to be looking for seven things to write down, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to write down is when we see examples like this, when they actually give you the slope and the y-intercept. So these are probably going to be the easiest ones. Remember that slope-intercept form looks like this. y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So if I'm trying to write um, a slope of negative 3, that would be negative 3x, and then a y-intercept of 1 half, that would be plus 1 half. So my answer to letter A is y is equal to negative 3x plus 1 half. For this one, it says the slope is 0 and the y-intercept is negative 2. So I could write it as y is equal to 0x minus 2, but really 0x is just going to cancel out. So my answer to be simplified would just be y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so we're going to try some on the next page just like this. Here are 1 and 2 that you're going to try in your notes. So let's go ahead and pause here and then click play when you're ready to check your work. Alright, so the slope in this one is 7, so that will be 7x, and the y-intercept is 2, so y is equal to 7x plus 2. For number 2, our answer should be y is equal to 1 3rd x minus 1. Easy enough. The next thing we're going to look at is what happens when we're given a graph. We can still find the slope and we can still find the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept is where the dot crosses over the y-axis, so in this case, the y-intercept is at negative 3. And to find slope, remember we, ju we just do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say that this is my y2 and y1 up here. So I'll have x2 and x1. Okay, so I'm going to do negative 3 minus 3 over 0 minus 4. That's going to give me negative 6 over negative 4 or a positive 3 over 2 is my slope. So my answer for letter A would be y is equal to 3 over 2x and then minus 3 because my y-intercept was negative 3. Over here, my y-intercept is a positive 2. The slope I'm going to do negative 1 minus 2, that's y2 minus y1. And then my x2 over x1, I'm going to do 4 minus 0. Remember, if you pick from this section first, you've got to do minus this minus this, that minus that. 1 minus 2 is going to give me negative 3. 4 minus 0 is going to give me 4. So that's negative 3 fourths. So my answer will be y is equal to negative 3 fourths x plus 2. Okay. Here are two that you get to try, numbers 3 and 4 in your notes. Again, let's pause first so you can try it by yourself, and once you're done, click play. Alright, so the y-intercept for number 3 is equal to 1, and then for my slope I did 1 minus 3 over 0 minus 4. 1 minus 3 is going to give me negative 2, 0 minus 4 is going to give me negative 4, that's equal to a positive 1 half. So my answer for number 3 should be y is equal to 1 half x plus 1. For number 4, my y-intercept is negative 1, and I'm going to do negative 3 minus negative 1, don't forget the minus, minus negative, and then 5 minus 0. Negative 3 minus 1 actually means negative 3 plus positive 1. So that would be negative 2 over 5. So my answer for number 4 would be negative 2 fifths x minus 1. The next part we're going to see is just um, some points. Notice that y-intercept isn't, isn't um, clearly given to us, so we do have to focus um, a little bit closer here. The y-intercept is where x is always equal to 0 and y would be another value. So in this case, here's my y-intercept, which would be negative 1. And then I would still find slope the same way, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. So for the first one, I'm going to do negative 1 minus 5, and then I'm going to do 0 minus negative 3. Negative 1 minus negative 5 is going to give me negative 6. And 0 minus negative 3 is giving me positive 3, so that's going to give me a negative 2 as my slope. 
So y is equal to negative 2x minus 1. Over here in letter B, notice where the x is equal to 0. That is my y-intercept. So y-intercept is at a negative 5. My slope, I'm going to do negative 5 minus negative 5 and 8 minus 0. Negative 5 minus 5 would just give us 0. 8 and then, sorry, 8 minus 0, if that wrong, gives us 8. So my slope is 8 or 0. So my y, my value will just be y is equal to negative 5 because there's no slope there. Here are the next one that you're going to try. So let's try number 5. So write an equation of the line that passes through 0, comma, negative 2 and 4, comma, 10. Again, you're looking for y-intercept and slope. Let's go ahead and pause here so you can try it by yourself. All right, my y-intercept is at negative 2 because when x is 0, that's my y-intercept. And then for slope, I'm going to do 10 minus negative 2 and 4 minus 0. 10 minus negative 2 equals 10 plus positive 2, which is 12. 4 minus 0 is 4, so my slope is 3. So for number 5, you should get y is equal to 3x minus 2. The next few look a little bit more challenging, but remember, again, it's um, still pretty simple. Remember, if you see anything f of x, that is also considered y. So when y is 0, or excuse me, when x is 0, y will be 10. So this actually means 0, comma, 10. And this one over here means 6, comma, 34. So the parentheses would represent the x, and outside the parentheses represents the y. So now we are able to see clearly that my y-intercept is equal to 10. And to find my slope, I'm going to do 34 minus 10 over 6 minus 0. That's going to give me 24 over 6, which is equal to 4. So my problem is not going to be y anymore. It'll be f of x is equal to 4x plus 10. And the reason why we're using f of x is because it tells us this is a function. So we're just naming it something else. Okay? So the next one says, Write a linear function g, so that means your answer is going to have g of x in it with the values g of 0 is equal to 9 and g of 8 is equal to 7. Let's go ahead and pause here so you can try it and once you're done, click play. So the first one actually means 0, 9 and the second means 8, 7. So my y-intercept you should see clearly now is at a positive 9 and then to find my slope I did 7 minus 9 over 8 minus 0. That's going to give me negative 2 over 8, which is equal to negative 1 fourth. So my answer will be g of x is equal to negative 1 fourth plus 9. Okay? The last, excuse me, the last one is a word problem. And it says, excluding hydropower, U.S. power plants use renewable energy sources to generate 105 megawatt, megawatt hours of electricity in 2007. So that's your starting amount. By 2012, the amount of electricity generated had increased to 219 megawatt hours. Write a linear model that represents the number of megawatts generated by non-hydropower renewable energy sources as a function in the number of years since 2007. So what you need to maybe know is the 105 million megawatts that is your starting megawatts, so maybe think about that as your y-intercept. So what you need to figure out is what should you use for the slope, okay? And then once you have that, you can write your um, linear function. So let's go ahead and pause here so you can try number seven by yourself. And then once you're done, click play to check your work. All right, so we did establish that y-intercept would be equal to 105 million because that is where we started generating electricity. The slope, however, is going to be found with the years um, and also with the generated electricity. So the 219, we're going to do 219 minus 105 because that's the distance, that's, that's the difference in the megawatt hours of you on your y axis. 
and then your x-axis is going to represent your years. We started in 2007 and went up five years, so really there's a change of five years minus the starting years. Even if you did to 2012 minus 2007, you still get five. So 219 minus 105, that's going to give us 114, and then five minus zero is five. You can either keep it like this, or we can write it as 22.8. So my linear function will be y is equal to 22.8x plus the 105, which is the starting amount. Again, if you had um, 114 over 5x plus 105, that's the same thing. I just changed mine to a decimal here um, because we're talking about a word problem. So this would be the more... Um, or the easier answer to understand for those real-world applications. Okay, that's all we have done for today, so thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Next time.